This season, Instacart has your back to school. As in, they've got your back to school lunch favorites like snack packs and fresh fruit. And they've got your back to school supplies like backpacks, binders, and pencils. And they've got your back when your kid casually tells you they have a huge school project due tomorrow. Let's face it, we were all that kid. So first, call your parents to say I'm sorry, and then download the Instacart app to get delivery in as fast as 30 minutes all school year long. Get a $0 delivery fee with your first three orders while supplies last. Minimum $10 an order. Additional terms apply. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, Right. For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. Hello, you are listening to Just Films and That. This is the podcast where we talk about films that we think deserve a little bit more love. Sometimes it's because they're underrated, sometimes it's underseen, sometimes we just want to talk about them. So let's see what it's going to be this week. Hello, thanks for tuning in. This is Just Films and That. We're going to talk about a film we think deserves a little bit more love. I'm the host of this week, Josh Hallam. And I'm Jamie Allerton. And this week we're going to be discussing Wolf from 1994, so spoiler warnings if you haven't seen it. Um, before we get into it, if you could head on over to whatever app or website or whatever you listen to this on, give us a little five-star rating or review, it would be massively appreciated. It helps other people hear us and hear our thoughts on Jack Nicholson in Wolf. Uh, we're on Patreon as well, so if you fancy supporting us um, and getting a little bit of extra content, then click the link in the show notes where you can get ad-free extended episodes with early access from £1 a month. So. Jamie Allerton. Josh, Josh, you smashed our intro today. I'm really Thank you. Really I, thanks. I, I appreciate your feedback. If you could leave me a five star rating and review. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know do leave a five star. If you're listening to this, you're not doing anything else. You're on the bus. You're probably hating someone. Give us a five star review. Go on. Yeah. What's the weirdest thing you've ever done whilst listening to this? Do you know what I mean? If, you know, <laughs> I want to know. Are you, are you, you know, are you, are you murdering someone? You know? Are you crying? Yeah. Are you being dumped? Are you being dumped right now because you listen to too yeah. many podcasts? He, she, they, they're not worth it. Um, but anyway, Jamie Wolf from 1994, you, you've you picked this one, mate. So tell the guys at home, they might have guessed what it's about. We'll tell them what yeah. it's about if they don't know. Uh, and uh, uh, why Why did you pick it, more importantly? Okay, I'll, I'll give you the, my, my synopsis and I'll tell you why I picked it. In 1994, the Joker and Catwoman team up for Wolf <laughs> using metaphor to dive into the cutthroat world of New York publishing. When Will is bitten by a wolf one night, he starts noticing changes to his libido, appetite, and bathroom etiquette. Starring Jack Nicholson and Michelle Pfeiffer as like probably the sexiest people to have ever been in a film. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've always liked Jack Nicholson. Like he's mm. he's not he's not an action star, and he, he kind of being being raised in the eighties. I was kind of at the back end of the you know the Schwarzeneggers, the Van the mm. the Van Dams, the Stallones. But because Batman was such a big film in our household, like we 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 put some respect on Jack Nicholson's name, and you know, but I saw some of his. I I always like like kind of nineties Jack, where he's mm. a little bit older, like Witches of Eastwick as well. I yeah, don't yeah. Know if you've seen that one? Uh, no, I don't think I've seen that one. No, but I did I, I did see a a great comment uh, on one of the reviews that said we've so we've now had the Jack Nicholson Michelle Pfeiffer Witches, we've had the Wolf one. Let's give us that the Dracula one. Or give us, give us the. Let's finish this trilogy <laughs> while they're both still alive. Imagine, I think. Well, yeah. Unfortunately, I think Jack's retired, hasn't he? But, Ninety-year-old uh, Nickerson now as Dracula, just not, just absolutely refusing to wear a costume, just in his normal <laughs> yeah. clothes, sunglasses, playing <laughs> golf. <laughs> um, so, that, so that, anyway, that's what it's about. Is it underrated? Is it underseen? Do you just want to talk about it? So this is heavily underrated. This is. Um, this considered a bomb, and it's it's Mike Nichols, the director, of the graduate, and mm, like mm. kind of considered one of his worst. Uh, so it's kind of it took a bit of a critical hammer, and I think the box office wasn't too great on it as well. And people always kind of talk about this as a failure, I think, and and that's when they do talk about it. It's kind of forgotten. It's not up there as a werewolf movie. The you kind of go your Lon Chaney Juniors and mm. your 
American Werewolf in London. I think American mm. Werewolf in London is probably the high point. Yeah. Team Wolf. Team Wolf, of course, yeah. yeah. And Team Wolf 2. <laughs> Team Wolf 2. Team Wolf the series. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think they made a spin-off movie for that as well, because I've got Paramount Plus now, and it, I, I can never get away from stupid... Why don't you watch this? Because yeah. I'm not a fourteen year old girl. Yeah. So it's interesting. So I I hadn't seen this before, but I had heard of it, and obviously I, I had an idea of what it's about because it's called Wolf. Um, but it seemed to me going into it that you know it does have all the ingredients there to work. It's got a great cast, like you said. You know, Mike Nichols is um, is is a is a very well renowned director. He's one of those directors is like more influential than you realize. He's a little bit like Robert mm. Altman. You know, he's made like The Graduate. He made a few other other things as well that you know are are, are influential. Um, and you know, even things like the composer Ennio Morricone is great, and the and the score for this is really great. So I didn't know anything about the reputation reputation of this. I just knew knew roughly. So I went into this was a sort of as blank a slate as possible, apart from you know knowing knowing what it was about. So let's uh, let's get stuck in then. So what what did you like about it? What did you like about Wolf? Is it the Wolf? <laughs> <laughs> I like um, I like how horses react to him. That's my favorite bit. Mm. Uh, if, if I was dating someone and horses were terrified of them, I'd be like, that's a green flag to go ahead. <laughs> uh, no, I, I always like when horror uses, uh, you know, its themes as metaphor. And this was about um, kind of back in the day where publishing was a, like print publishing was powerful and they didn't mm. foresee the internet. Um, it kind of, I, I like in this that he's he's bitten by a wolf. And then when he has his meeting with uh, on Puri, uh, he says, well, you know, you can only be the wolf if you had it in you all along. And it's kind of like suggesting you were kind of a bit of a dick all along, but you had that that killer instinct in mm. you all along. I love the politics in this as well. I think that this is the most James Spader character that James Spader has ever played. Yeah, I mean, that was that was the bit I found the most interesting. Yeah. It was like the, 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 corporate, people... the corporate, you know, the corporate cuts and changes they were making to the company. I was like, well, it's, you know... He's not going to go to. He's not going to go to Eastern Europe. Yeah, I love. I love when someone comes into an office and they're like, "Get out the file of facts. I need you to call this person and this person. Get so and so on the phone." And they're like, "There's a great bit where David I. Pierce is like, uh, uh, this plan that you said. Have we even done any of that?'" And he's like, "No, we haven't. But let's see what happens." And you're like, "Fucking yes, Jack, yeah. fight back." It's like uh, you know, obviously it's not a horror film or anything, but like Glenn Gary Glenn Ross is like one of the most yeah. thrilling films you watch, and it's just <laughs> businessmen. <laughs> ABW, always be wolfing. Yeah, yeah, always be wolfing. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the criticism of this is that it kind of, it, it, they say that it kind of falls off in the second half because it just becomes your standard horror film. But I don't think there's anywhere else for it to go. People would be pissed off if what this ended up in a boardroom, you know. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I agree. So, so one of the things I liked about it, I didn't think, it, it's not, listen, it's not perfect. I didn't think it trailed off in the second half. It's just very different. And I think that, like you say, where else is it going to go? If it if two thirds of the way through, he just went, oh, actually, I'm all right. Anyway, back to this merger. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I've come to terms with the changes that it's making me. Yeah. And I think the, the, the great thing about the werewolf genre is your, your monster is also your hero. It's, yes, it's I, the I duality like, of it, isn't it? That part in a werewolf film where someone's like, "Oh no, it's me. I'm the problem. It's mm. me." Yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's always the. I, I like that moment because you don't get it in anything else. And anything else, it's you know, it's Van Helsing fighting Dracula. Mm. It's it's Robocop fighting. I don't know the downtrodden. It's light versus dark, whereas this is light and dark. Yeah, well, it's one of those milk and white chocolate bars. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, I agree, and I think that what I liked about it as well is that you know it starts really naturalistic, and then it becomes more chaotic. So mm. starts naturalistic, and then it goes more and more stylized as it goes. So it almost like it starts feeling like this business led drama, and you're like, "Hang on, where's the, where's the werewolf?" And then and then you know it almost feels like an Aaron Sorkin thing, and then it does evolve into this really stylized, more horror driven, a little bit campy in places as well, and, and stuff like that. It felt to me a little bit like. Felt like a, a Greek tragedy, but done as a universal mm. horror with a bit of Hitchcock in there as well. Oh yeah, it's it's there's huge melodrama. One of the things I really liked in it as well is that it doesn't stray away from like acknowledging the tropes. It doesn't think it's better than the tropes. Mm. And I think that's why it might seem out of like out of place when he goes to see the Asian mystic, which people are like like I've seen some criticism of that. I've like tonally, this is so out of place for this mm. film. But I think that is because of the kind of the it, it, it's paying respect to previous werewolf films you know the, it's a the homage. Ma- yeah the magic talisman is the, what they're saying is look we're 
we're a different film tonally we're a bit more serious but we're not saying that we're better than what's gone before us we're still going to have the the fangs and the facial hair or no facial hair on jack nicholson because he probably did this film just because he looks like a, a wolf <laughs> like it's, it's <laughs> But yeah, and even, looked at his eyebrows and went, "Yeah, you should play well." It, even when he does go to see Aubrey as as the sort, like you say, as the as the Asian mystic, it doesn't. It, he's there. He doesn't. He doesn't lean massively into the stereotype. There's a bit where he's like, "I want you to buy it because I'm sick," and he's like, "No." Nah. He's like, "All right, fair enough." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really like that. Like, some characters kind of don't react all the time the way you'd think they would, like, and mm. I, I like that they, for some reason, they he doubles up on something that happens before where he goes, "Do you want?" Do you want honey or milk in your tea? And he goes, honey. He's like, oh, I'm going to eat honey. And it's, like, it's quite a natural thing, but it it, it kind of reminds you of uh, when Stuart said, I'll quit. And he goes, I want you to quit. And he goes, I'm, I'm not quitting. I don't know why I said that. Yeah. Yeah, like no, it's, 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 it's that it's that real blending of the naturalistic and the stylized, isn't it? And it's like like you say, so I thought James Spader was really good in this, and he does strike a real balance of he's he's really likable for most apart from the last, you know, 15 minutes where he really just becomes the villain. But he's quite likable and also really slimy at the same time. So when Jack Nicholson's character is finding out stuff about him, like you say, he's called Stuart James Spader's character. Then he goes to speak to him. He's like, "I didn't say that," and you're like, well, "Maybe you didn't say that." <laughs> yeah, I I like that um, kind of Jack's a step ahead of us at the start, mm. where where you think he is being screwed over, and um, Christopher Plummer says, "Oh, the the person who's got your job, they were begging for it," and you think you're like, "Oh no, that's that's going to be James Spader," but Jack doesn't know that he's been stabbed in the back, and when he comes back to the party, you just congratulate him, mm. and you're like, "Oh, you knew he was a snake." Okay, all right, nice, um, and it's. It, I, it, it's possible that James Spader didn't even know he was in a film because this does seem like <laughs> they were just following him around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but also, like, how bad are the police in this? That when James Spader comes in, like horny and horny for murder mm. to be questioned, that they aren't like that's probably this guy that did it. Like, <laughs> Literally, like r- yellow in the eyes. No yeah. one goes. I think this guy's. It's like sn- it's sniffing dude. people. Yeah. I think we should probably take a look at this guy. <laughs> also, if someone is, I mean, and we're getting into nitpicks now, but if someone's mauled by an animal, would you then go, this is a murder? No. Wouldn't you be like, there's a bear out somewhere? Yeah, better call the animal control people. Yeah. <laughs> what else What else do you like about it? Um... Uh, so I like the cast. Uh, I, I quite like the way it's shot. Like, there's some 1950s rear projection in this guy. Mm. There. I actually, like, I... I like that it invokes old Hollywood. Um, you know, I, I've seen some criticism of the wolf animatronic at the end of this, but actually I quite like that because it's quite distinctive. Mm. Um, and uh, and the, yeah, all our politics, I think. This is my favourite urinating on someone's shoes in a movie. It's, it's one of the top ones. Yeah, top ten. Um, yeah. But I, I do like that you, you like Will the whole time, I think. Mm. Uh, and uh, I like how subtle it is on the how he can smell someone's booze. It, it's it's kind of it's kind of a, a pre superhero movie where he's he's discovering his powers. Yeah, but know? it's not the climbing up the wall or the or the how far can I jump or fly or or, or whatever. No, I like I mean, he can hear other conversations and, and and stuff like that. Yeah, and I like that he uh, he doesn't use the those aren't the powers that he uses to get ahead though. It's just that what it cha- it changes his personality. To the point that he's like, oh, I can be a, a prick in this office and not just roll over ironically like a dying dog. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, I think like you're the same as me, where all that all that political intrigue or the the office politics is quite interesting. Did you notice the building that they work in? No, the, the Bradbury building. So that that building they work in is quite famous, and it's been in loads of movies, including oh, right. like Blade Runner. It's I think it's it's his his where he lives. And what women want. To, it's the ah. office from what women want. But yeah, it's it's used in loads of uh, loads of movies because it's got that beautiful like you you go outside and you can hear different officers on different levels because it's mm. got that open plan uh, type thing. It almost looks like a library inside in places, doesn't it? That 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 sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess what probably the thing that we both liked was seeing David Schwimmer from nineteen ninety four. Yeah, being like yeah. you're going to be one of the most famous people in the world in a few years, Very and then soon. you're going to disappear. 
yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're being Band of Brothers, and you'll probably be the answer to you'll, a couple of quiz questions. You'll direct Run Fat Boy Run, <laughs> <laughs> which I like. I like from Fat Boy Run. Let's add it to the list. Yeah, uh, but yeah, yeah so, so, so no, I, overall I liked it as well. I did. I, 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 it's a lot of this is on Nicholson though, and like you say, the mm. the fact that you like Will all the way through, you know. Obviously, there's plenty of other amazing actors who could who could have done it, but Nicholson has that thing of he's so good at doing the like he's so good at doing the two sides of that sort of arch coin. On one hand, he can be a a real likable rogue. On the other hand, he can just be a bit of an unhinged bastard. You know, he's either you know the, the Costello in The Departed or the Joker, or on the other hand, he's he's this or maybe something like as good as it gets or Chinatown or or whatever. Yeah, they show a hint uh, like a flash of him. At the very at the very start, when he's at the big party, uh, he actually he, you can see how bored he is of all the socialites, and he just comes mm. out with something that embarrasses his wife and <laughs> Stuart. Where he says that I can't remember what he says, but it's like completely off putting to people, and they're like, mm. "Okay, we're gonna go fill up our drinks," and you're like, "Oh, that's that's not the wolf. That's that's Will Free. I know he's already been bitten at this point, but I that's not the wolf. That's just manager. what he was like. That's him. Yeah, yeah. like just going. Oh, God, I fucking hate all this. Um, mm. Yes, I mean, yeah, Jack's great. Also, I think a great thing that they do to explain the start of their relationship, him and Michelle Pfeiffer, is to, that they show she's only doing it to piss off her dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like in so many of these films where the age is so different, uh, you're kind of like, oh, you, you wouldn't fancy him. That's not, I don't see this. Whereas it starts out where she's just like, I want my dad to think that we're rotten in here. <laughs> well, actually, I'd prefer it if you leave. Yeah, I just I just wanted to think that, but I'm not going to do that. Yeah, you old you old man, leave me alone. <laughs> okay, so we'll move on to things that we didn't like about about Wolf or that we might change. Is them is there much for you? I've I've got a couple of bits here, so I can go first if you want, or 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 you can. What what have you got? Yeah, go on. You, you go first. Let's see. If I you just go. thought it was crap. No. Um... <laughs> <laughs> It should have been called Cat. <laughs> no, 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 overall, I really enjoyed it. Like I said, it was it was Greek tragedy with Universal Horror, Hitchcock, well-performed, well-directed. I lo- thought the music was great. A um, little bit bloated in places, a little bit sort of overlong. I thought that I didn't mind the relationship between Nicholson and, 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 and Pfeiffer or the age difference or anything like that, but I didn't think they had loads of chemistry. And I thought they focused on him a little bit too much to the point where it, it did slow it down a little bit. And then on top of that, you do have quite a lot of drawn out dialogue scenes where people are talking and leaving quite long pauses. And mm. um, so there was the odd bit where it felt not to a criminal degree, as I say, we're all about balance. So I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to find stuff. Um, so there was that, you know, maybe just a little bit bloated and, 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 and that's why I'd, I'd say why other than that, maybe an argument could be made that, the odd, you know, because of Nicholson's age and because of the baggage around the star power of Jack Nicholson, some of the wolf bits are probably a bit funnier than they're meant to be. Yeah, I guess. Uh, what do you mean, like when he's running down the street and? You know, yeah, or the bit where he just suddenly starts flinging himself up the stairs, but you know, he's a nearly sixty-year-old man at that point. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, due to like DVD quality and stuff, or or even Blu-ray quality, mm. uh, it there's a bit where he's running through the woods. And it keeps cutting to a completely different guy. Like, yeah. <laughs> he's chasing a deer. I'm sure yeah. back in the 90s, the lighting in, in cinemas was not as good. But you're just like, oh, is the is the two men running through? Yeah, is the two the Jack Nichols and Wolf? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, because I didn't mind a lot of the effects. I didn't mind. I quite enjoyed the the way they used things like shadow, so that you didn't really see a lot of the transformation. The way they used the camera and the editing and the, and the shadow and stuff like that. But there is the odd bit, like you said, like that bit where you're like. It reminded me of Monty Python where where uh, Ran Slot's running at the castle and it keeps just cutting to the same <laughs> shot over and over again and, and stuff like that. But And like you say, unfortunately with films like this, time hasn't always been yeah. kind to them. Yeah, and we, I think uh, it's it's not a horror film or a, an action film. No. And and I think it's kind of studio mandated that finale. You can kind of, t- I mean, the, the studio did tell them we need more action at the end. And mm, they- there's, there's a lot of, there's, it was, is it that it was reshot or there's a rumour that like more of it was reshot than there was? I'm sure I read somewhere that was like, they, there was a rumour that they reshot more than half of it and that's the, not actually true, but they did reshoot some of it. Now, what I heard is that they, they it was cost them 750 grand for them to just get the shot of Nicholson jumping over the the horse stable. They, uh. they said that that fight doesn't have enough action in it. 
and also they they wanted something for the trailer mm. and it was that they would just end like completely spoil the last act <laughs> yeah i mean the, 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 like, the last act is scene. probably the for me anyway probably the weakest part of the film it's not weak it's just the weakest part of the film what would you say yeah it is because we've enjoyed kind of it as meta for for so long but mm. again as i say I, I don't think there's anything else you can do we'd be so disappointed if he if if, if it didn't like progress into the actual physical mm. um i mean the only other criticism i've got is how's about you let me guess some things in this film because <laughs> Like it's so obvious that Stu's a prick. It's so obvious that like, the, he's having sex with his wife. It's pretty obvious who killed the wife. I suppose this for this film. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit like the sort of what's going to happen. Yeah, it's a little bit like the sort of person who's like, let me do the impression. Who's this? It's Donald Trump. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh right, you didn't let me guess. Yeah, like, and like when when, <laughs> when, when Aubrey is like, do you know what? Sometimes you don't even have to be bitten by the wolf, and you're like, oh, okay, so so Michelle Piper is going to become like a wolf. Okay. Yeah, I know what you mean. I think there's that as well. And there's, there's the odd emotional beat. Like, I didn't fe- I didn't really feel anything in particular when Nicholson's wife dies. The cop just comes in and goes, oh, she's dead. Yeah, did you, uh, like, do a whoop in the air? Yeah, I was, I was made up. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you know, like, my emotion bombs, and there are no emotion bombs in this film. There's no... no, and and it's almost like, like you say, it's almost like they don't give you any because, uh, because they tell you everything. Yeah, it's, I guess it's quite cold and clinical, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And that's, that does. That's the sort of thing that makes you suspect studio intervention. I mean, largely, I, I did, I, I did, I did think it was great, and I did like that they didn't stray away from things like there isn't a happy ending. Really, he's just, he's just a wolf. Yeah, I mean, he runs off into the the grounds of a billionaire that are protected by two guards. Mm. Um, uh, do you think that <laughs> when I was watching, I was like, this is a nineteen ninety four billionaire, mm. and one of them just gets driven through by a four by four. Like, I think there'd be more security. And yeah. got, he, the other one's very nonchalant about, um, there's a wild animal rolling, rolling around here and it's killed something the other day, so be careful. Michelle anyway, Fire. I'm clocking off now. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got your no. spray? All right, bye. <laughs> but yeah, and that's why the ending is what made me think of, dream, of, of Greek tragedy. Do you know what I mean? It is yeah. just like, oh, this uh, um, he's, he's going to go do this. Oh, and then he turns us down. It is like, oh, and everything wasn't okay. Everything wasn't okay, you know. No. Yeah. And and that's what this is. And I think that's that's quite especially if like things like the studio were meddling, that is quite brave to be like, no, no, it, it finishes with Jack Nicholson, he's a wolf, and and obviously you get the thing of, well, Michelle Fife is probably gonna turn into wolf and they're gonna be together, but there's no indication of of how much humanity they retain, you know, when they are wolves. So they might just be two wild wolves. Yeah, I guess it's not it's not a sad ending or a happy ending. Uh, it's kind of, it just it just ends. But I do I do like that. You know, it it feels dramatic, and you have when she's kind of making that appointment for the the plane to be fueled. You're like, there's no way they're getting that plane. Mm. There's no way. What you got to bring a werewolf onto a plane? Like, <laughs> Is this guy okay? Put him down below. <laughs> he's just he's just shaving again. <laughs> oh, um. do you know what else I like in this is. Um, the a lot of films like this they kind of reject the notion straight away like don't be so ridiculous and he's pretty much from the off do you know what I'm bloody turned into a wolf yeah it, it is literally isn't it it's literally like I think like in the way you'd be like oh I think I'm getting a cold you're like oh I think I think I'm turning into a wolf it's like can you get me a book on you know what happens when you turn into a wolf because yeah. this you know, I don't think I'll be in tomorrow. <laughs> because I'll have turned into a wolf, and that's very <laughs> serious. I'll, I'll have come back to my hotel covered in blood, and yet reception will not report it. They'll just say <laughs> I was here all night. Okay, so we'll move on to talking about the critical reception then. Now, I, I haven't seen the critical reception, but you've been pretty effusive in in your your praise and the fact that you think it's really underrated. So I don't I don't want to go big. I don't. This, we're not talking like a three or a four or something like that, but... I think we're, you know, the the general consensus. I think you like it more than I do, but I think we've both had, you know, I think, we, I think it's, this is a solid film that deserves a bit mm-hmm. more love. So I'm going to say that we're, we're probably looking at like a six and a six and a half for the critics or, and the overall, but that it's, you know, it's easily into the seven, seven and a halves for me. Um, so I would say it probably is going to be underrated. So so um, let's let's hear it. Let's hear the scores. Yeah, so this isn't one of those ones where I'm like, Josh, this is the best film ever made. Like, I no. It has its flaws. It's a bit dour, you know. 
Uh, but IMDb, okay, 6.3. Okay. Yeah, that's, you know, Not I'm, too I'm bad, a, but it's still I'm, bad. I'd say I'm 7.5 myself, yeah. yeah. Uh, review score, uh, so uh, Rotten Tomatoes review score, 62%. Right. Audience score, 43%. Jesus. What did yeah. they see in it? Exactly. <laughs> Just loads of cats. <laughs> <laughs> Just really disappointed in it. Yeah, so so hang on, that's, that, is, that is, let me just work out the average, 168. Yeah, so that's 56. So that, was that 63, was it? 63. Yeah, 63, 62, 43. That 43 is really dragging that down. So yeah, that 43 I... drags it down into, into the mid fives. Which is not right, is it? No, and like you say, you know, I think you liked it more than me. I think I'd probably give it a, a seven, maybe more or less bang on. Um, but I mean, that 43 is really too low and five and a half is, is, is too low as well. So so I think, we, I think we can say underrated. Yeah, I think that's horror fans who have found it and then gone hold on this isn't horror for me yeah this is so this is uh this is too complex it's, it's not one thing it's more complex than that sort of thing yeah uh, all right what have you got for us next week then josh bit of a change of pace for next week um for, from wolf so next week we're going to be watching and we're going to be talking about a little british comedy um which some people may have heard of a little british comedy starring steve coogan called the parole officer Yes, indeed. So, yes, uh, thank you very much for listening to this week's episode of Wolf. Tune in uh, next week. We're going to talk about the parole officer. In the meantime, if you'd like to get in touch with us, it's filmsandthatpod at gmail.com or on all the social medias if you just search for Just Films and That on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, slash... Well, not Instagram slash X, X or Twitter, TikTok, and we're on YouTube as well. We're don't call it X. Don't, don't call it that. Okay. Uh, we're on social media. Get your social medias and type Just Films and that and give us a follow. We're always putting content out there. And all that remains to be said is thank you very much for listening. We'll see you next week. It's goodbye from me. Cheerio. Bye. one 800 flowerscom is more than your birthday, anniversary, or just because gift-giving destination. We put our hearts into everything we do to help you celebrate all life's special occasions with friends and family. From our farmers and bakers, florists and makers, everything from one 800 flowers is made with love every step of the way. Because we know that nothing is more important than delivering a smile. To learn more, visit one 800 flowerscom slash ACAST. That's one 800 flowerscom slash ACAST. Need new glasses or want a fresh new style? Warby Parker has you covered. Glasses start at just 95 bucks, including anti-reflective, scratch-resistant prescription lenses that block 100% of UV rays. Every frame's designed in-house, with a huge selection of styles for every face shape. And with Warby Parker's free home try-on program, you can order five pairs to try at home for free. Shipping is free both ways, too. Go to warbyparker.com covered to try five pairs of frames at home for free. WarbyParker.com slash covered. Want to teach your kids financial literacy, but not sure where to start? Greenlight can help. With Greenlight, parents can keep an eye on kids' spending and saving, while kids and teens use a card of their own to build money confidence. As a parent, you can send instant money transfers, set up chores, automate allowance, and more. It's a convenient way to run your household, customized to your family's needs, and the easy way to raise financially smart kids. Get started with Greenlight today and get your first month free at greenlight.com slash listen.